Welcome into our Coin 6 Civil War coverage. And I got Marcus Greaves with me. He's our Coin 6 Sports digital reporter. And, uh, I mean, we got him here for many reasons. And <laughs> but most of all, we need to talk about the 2016 Civil War. So oh, this absolutely. man was on that team. And so he's going to provide us a little inside perspective on, on what was going on. First of all, just take us through the 2016 season, not just the Civil War, but the mm. season. Kind of set the table for what was happening that year. Well, the, the tough thing about that year was the fact of we knew how good of a team we could be, right? It wasn't the fact of, you know, we had a, a crazy amount of talent. I think we were one of the most talented teams in the conference. But the biggest thing was the fact of we, we just couldn't put together a full game, right? Whether it's the first quarter we did great, second quarter we did great, and third quarter we fell off, or whatever, you know, whatever, I guess, way you want to put it. It was just the fact that we didn't put together a complete game. So we went through the season. I mean, there are some games where, like I, I had, uh, Idaho State. We played Idaho State, and I think it was 30-7. to 7. It was a great game, right? It was a great game, but it was the fact that we didn't put together a full game. We thought we obviously should blow them out more. And, and that kind of went on the rest of the season where we played some tough games. We played Stanford really tough when they had Christian McCaffrey, Bryce Love. Um, we played Washington, scored the most points on Washington. Uh, it, there's just a lot that kind of went into it. But finally we started to catch a head of steam at the end of the season, right, where it was – we played Arizona at home, and we ended up beating Arizona, I think it was, I want to say 56 to 14 maybe. I got, I got, I got the score for you. I got the <laughs> score for you in my, in my prep work here. 42-17. 42-17. So, I mean, it was a blowout. Yeah. And so Oregon State had this momentum all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. And Oregon, as we know that season, you know, things were really coming to a point trending the wrong direction. Yeah. You know, you had Mark Helfrich. He was starting, you know, he was on the hot seat. Mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot was coming down to the line in the Civil War, and both teams ending up, around four wins. They were both four and eight on, the, on that season. So let's fast forward. Let's get to the Civil War. Mm -hmm. Oregon is struggling. <laughs> you know, they did come off a win against Utah at the time, yeah. but in general, Oregon is struggling. Oregon State, you guys coming off this win, this massive win against Arizona mm -hmm. at home. Civil War time is here. What's the feeling? What's the emotion as, <laughs> as, as that game is about yeah. to, to begin? Well, the first thing was it was just we, we kind of had a different feeling, right? And every Civil War, don't get me wrong, you want to be competitive. You want to say, you know, we're going to go in and beat the Ducks. But let's be honest, right? There's sometimes when the Ducks go to the national championship, we understand that, you know, they're the better team this year. But you're always going to give it your best. You're always going to fight. But there was something different. There wasn't the feeling of they're better than we are. It was we're just as good, if not better, right? We knew we were the tougher team. Uh, we saw their weaknesses, and we were, we were basically thinking we can expose those easily. So there's a lot that was kind of going in. But going into that game, I mean, I'm telling you, man, all week was a thing where uh, – we didn't talk about the game. There wasn't like, you know, Civil War is in three days. You guys ready or what? It was just the, the locker room was weird. It was silent, right? There wasn't a lot of just chatter or about anything, right? There wasn't a lot of smack talking on, you know, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is, right? There wasn't a lot of smack talking. It was just the fact of in the back of our mind, we already knew what we were going to do. It was just a fact of now we had to wait until we get to that point. And right before kickoff, man, I mean, I'm telling you, it was – the rain, it was the fans coming in. I mean, the stadium was kind of split in half where you have, you know, you have the Ducks, you have the Beavers. Uh, the coaches were already going at it, right? Everyone was just going at it, but it was a fact. It was like the calm before the storm. And finally when it, you know, the ball kicked off, everything was out the window, man. It was time to go. <laughs> <laughs> you could feel it. And so, again, I, I, I was at that game. I was covering yeah. it, you know, back in my first market. And it was. You felt, it just felt different because mm -hmm. you had Oregon on this downward spiral, you yeah. know. You guys at the time were, were trending up, and uh, it, you, you could feel that energy. It was very, it was very different. It was very mm -hmm. palpable in, yeah. in the fans, and it mattered that it was in Corvallis. It yeah. did matter that it was in it Corvallis, did. and it's interesting to hear your perspective, not only because you played, but because you don't hear what was in the locker room. Mm -hmm. You know, the players, when you talk to them as media in a, in a scrum, <laughs> it, you, you know, they don't really acknowledge that it's different, yeah. and in this case, it, it, it really was. It absolutely mattered more. So kickoff is underway, and it was close. I mean, it was it was tied at halftime. Mm -hmm. um, Oregon held a uh, it was a three point lead, 24-21 in the third quarter. But you you have a moment of when mm -hmm. you know that you guys are about to take control, even though you were trailing. You yeah. took the first lead at seven nothing, but even though you were trailing, you knew that Oregon State and your beeves were going to come back and fight this one to the end. Yeah, definitely, because, you know, quarterback at the time was Marcus McMurray. Marcus is the most humble guy you'll ever meet. Him and Ryan Nall were kind of having a big game all, you know, the whole game. And so even, you know, me primarily being a, a kick returner, special teams guy, when they bring you in, right, he says, everyone come here, everyone come here. So you all come in, right, and, and do this big huddle right before the offense takes the field. Marcus looked every single one of us in the eye, pointed at all of us. He's like, we're going to win this game. I don't know how we're going to do it. 
I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what has to happen, but we're going to win this game. We're not going to lose this game, but we're going to win this game for Beaver Nation. And, you know, when your quarterback says that, man, what else can you do other than win the game, right? <laughs> I mean, it was a fact of every kickoff, every kickoff return, every punt, every punt return, right? Whatever the special teams guys, offense or defense guys, it didn't matter. Every single play, we were playing like it was the last play of the game where the, the game is on the line. And I think that was a difference where I don't think in the years past that we've had a guy bring us all in, look us dead in the eye, right, and say, we're going to win this game. It doesn't matter what is going to happen or what has to happen. We're going to win this game. And at that point, like I said, man, everything kind of just flipped, right? The players, the coaches. I mean, you had Coach Anderson. You had all the, all the coaches, strength coaches, everyone looking right at Marcus like he wants to go win this game. And as soon as he said that, we all went behind him and said, we're going to win this game. And so after that, you could just feel it. You could feel the, the Ducks kind of take a step back like, whoa, like what, you know, kind of what happened to him? It's kind of like boxing, right? You, you get towards the end, of the, the end of a round, you get towards, you know, the end of the fight, and you're dog tired and everything like that. But it's kind of like we had a – it was like a, another breath of life, right? We came back out, and it was like the game just started, man. We were, we were fresh. The guys were ready to go. It was, it was the craziest thing I ever experienced. And it's almost like a feeling that you could never, ever describe because – I mean, even talking about now, all right, the, I'm getting the chills from it. I'm ready to go suit up. But it was just crazy because it was something that we've never had and, and something that it was we took a step back and said, this is this is the turning point for Oregon State. This is where Oregon State is going to start trending back up. And I mean, it, it's something that a lot of Oregon State players and fans hadn't mm -hmm. had for either their entire careers or had seen for a long time. It had yeah. been eight years. Oregon had, had gone on an eight <laughs> Civil War game winning streak. Yeah. So this was unprecedented and you know I know that you're pretty open about this but you know Oregon State struggled in the mm -hmm. first years after Riley left I yeah. mean there's it's called like you see it and so when it came down to this and Oregon had a few uh, Oregon State I should say had a few wins under its belt and the Civil War comes down to it Marcus takes you guys and mm -hmm. you know way we're gonna go win this game you knew you were gonna go win this game Ryan Nall in the last 15 minutes scores three touchdowns yeah. and eventually puts you guys on top clock hits zero you've pulled it off <laughs> It's happened. Yeah. What in the world is going on? The emotions. I mean, like I said, I was on that field, and I didn't know who was more excited between fans, players. <laughs> there was so much happening. Yeah. It was – I don't even know who was more excited because when that happened, I mean, Johnny Munt, uh, the Ducks tight end, he dropped that ball thrown by Justin Herbert. Perfect dime right in the breadbasket. It was just pouring down rain, right? And yeah. he just dropped the ball, man. And that would – I think that was a fourth down, turnover on downs. And I don't think it really clicked for us for a second, though, because, you know, college football, anything can happen. So you can't – until, you know, it's zero mm -hmm. on the clock, you can't really be sure, right? We've right. seen some crazier things happen. So all the running backs were sitting right by each other, kind of like this. Mm -hmm. We're just talking like, hey, when we get back out there, right, if they score, we have to get this onside kick. And then on top of that, we got to do this and that and this and that. But he dropped the ball, and, and it didn't hit us for a second, right? So I was sitting right next to Jalen Bailey, Ryan Nall, Artavis Pierce, and we're sitting down, and – all of a sudden, like, Nall was like, we just won this game. I was like, you know, we all kind of look at each other like, we won this game, all right? And then, you know, obviously everyone starts rushing the field, and I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't even tell you this, but I wasn't even ready for anything, so I just started screaming. I left my helmet. I actually ended up losing my helmet. I had no idea where I went, but <laughs> you start, you know, sprinting out to the field, screaming. Fans are coming all over. I mean, I remember I saw my mom, my older brother, you know, a bunch of fans, basically. Everyone just running on the field, you know, and... I went to actually to go give my mom a hug, and all of a sudden, like, my feet leave the ground. I was like, what's going on? And, like, you know, I'm just crowd surfing now. It, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. But uh, it was just – there was so much emotion. And plenty of guys were crying and everything like that. Even though it was the last game of the season, you know, for the seniors who, who weren't going to play another game, is there a better way to go out, right? And eventually, you know, I had to retire from football. That was actually my last game because I tore my second ACL. But, man, just seeing Corvallis come back alive, right? And like I've said – you know, plenty of times we struggled big time. There was a lot of time where there was a lot of doubt, not only in the team, in the community, uh, and honestly in each individual player, even me sure. being one of those people where we didn't really see the light at the end of the tunnel. And then after that game, man, there was just so much where you're thinking Corvallis is, you know, Oregon State's back. You know, Coach Anderson, uh, you know, he did a great job coaching us that year and, you know, so on and so forth. Ryan Nall, is he going to go to the NFL? Or is he going to stay? Marcus McMarion, just he's the next big quarterback at Oregon State. Everything was trending up, man. It was just a fact of it. I won't even beat around the bush. We deserve that win, right? And it was, it was 
the first time where we knew we were better than them and we knew our mentality was different than theirs, where we were going to win this game no matter what. Do we, I don't know if we have time. We can maybe break out at some point. We can talk about the raincoats at mm. some point. We, 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 don't, we don't have time. We don't have time. We don't have time. But, I mean, to go back to that emotion, again, I, I covered Oregon State for, for a number of years, and the only reason I mention is you talk about the, the seniors. Mm -hmm. I will never forget talking with Tristan Dacoud in the mm -hmm. post game, and that man broke down as if, you know, you'd won a bowl game because yeah. it was bigger than a bowl game. Yeah. You could feel that it was – and for those seniors to go out like that, you know, it was – it was powerful. Mm -hmm. It was very, it was very special to to be there and be a part of. I uh, to go back to the fans though, and to talk about what this meant for them when you're when you're on the field and you see this. I mean, what a breath of relief mm -hmm. for a fan base that has yeah. felt repressed by by Oregon dominance in the Civil War for so long, for so long. <laughs> yeah. And you know, again, if we're calling it like we see it. At the beginning of the year, you wouldn't have predicted an Oregon State win in that Civil War. No. There was no reason to. Mm -hmm. There was no reason to. And so then it all comes together. I mean, what, were, what was your interaction like with, with fans? Because that fan base, I think, mm -hmm. needed that win as much as anybody. Yeah, well, it, it's <laughs> – I've always been a player where, you know, you leave the game and there's maybe fans, you know, little kids. Mm -hmm. Regardless, you know, I, I use my platform for a bigger reason other than football. Mm -hmm. So I always wanted to, you know, show the fans love, show, you know, really anyone love because – you play in front of them, they're paying to see you, right? They're paying, you know, good money for tickets, taking their time out of their day to go watch you play. So it's only right to, you know, when you win a big game like this and you being someone who is from Oregon, Travis, just like myself, you know, being from Prineville, I'm going to be honest, no, nobody, nobody hate me for this. But, <laughs> you know, I was, I was a huge Ducks fan growing up, yeah. right? And that's just because of the flash, because of everything that we've seen, right? Mm -hmm. And then... So we knew, I mean, you being one of those people, you knew what the Civil War was about. Right. So finally getting over that hump of, you know, we're the little brother and right. everything like that, right? It, it just meant so much to the fans, and we knew it did. That's why we wanted to stay out, you know, on the field after the game instead of running back to the locker room. We wanted to spend all, as much time as possible because they were there for some, ugly, for some ugly games. You know, there's plenty of games where I was a part of, you know, 62 to, to 7 or 48 to 7 games where – they stayed the whole time, man. They, yeah. They're loyal to the soil. So that's yeah. why after that game ended, it was only right for us to, you know, go spend time with them and, and truly show them that we appreciate them more than just, you know, just for being there when we do good. Yeah, that's yeah. great. It's going to be a blast this weekend, too. Beavers, obviously, they can clinch a bowl. They yes. can clinch a bowl berth, <laughs> which is something not a lot of people were saying at the beginning of this year, and they could do yes. it in Eugene. Would it be an upset? Yes, but mm -hmm. it's something that is possible. Uh, to listen to more of this guy talk about the Civil War, you can do that online at coin.com or anywhere you download podcasts because he's got beaver smack, he's got ducking around. And, I mean, hey, what a better way when you're – if you're driving to the game, listen to this man talk about the Civil War. It's not a bad way to do it. Um, I mean, and talk about – I mean, you had Marcus McMarion on your show today. Mm -hmm. So you can talk about I – mean, it's the last, the last Oregon State quarterback to, to <laughs> win a Civil War for Oregon State in, you know – it's been 12 years. I mean, since, since 2007. So maybe yeah. they can change the tide. Not no no, no bad juju here. No, no bad, bad juju, here. but I think they can change the tide. That's why you guys <laughs> got to tune into the podcast. We have uh, on the on the Beaver Smack podcast. We have Jaquiz Rogers hopping on. He talks about his favorite Civil War moment, as well as James Dockery. Both those guys have been through the good and the bad of the Civil War. So. Just hearing them talk about their experiences make me feel like I can still suit up a little bit, man, to get out there and be ready. <laughs> we'll get the pads on. We'll get the pads yeah, on. I, I won't. I won't. But you can, you can do that. Like I said, on coin.com or anywhere you download your podcast. Marcus, best of luck this weekend. Hey, let's do it, man. <laughs>